Hey guys, my name's Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. Create a lot of content for MSPs. Today's video, I'm recovering the MFA report I created for automating Microsoft 365 documentation in Synchro. This is a follow-up to a holistic video I did showing you all the scripts I wrote for documenting many things from your customer 365 environments into Synchro. So I'm just following up on that to do a little bit deeper dive for each one of these scripts so you understand what everything means if you're not as familiar to PowerShell and basic error handling for things you might see as well too that I'll walk you through here. Before I get started, if you do want to see a lot of content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Getting into it here though, this is the repository that I'll link below here which has all of the scripts. Today again we're going to be focusing on the MFA status script and before I get into that, just to show you kind of what that actually looks like as far as the out output goes, we're displaying the legacy MFA, which I call legacy MFA, which is the old portal where you go in to do enforced, enabled, or disabled. The new methods of registering for multi-factor authentication include security defaults and conditional access policies, which don't actually trigger this value to change at all. So it's possible that you could have users with registered MFA that actually are in the disabled status in your legacy platform. So that's why I report on both here. Just you actually have a true representation of registration for the user. I also go in and I list all the conditional access policies that you have in the tenant. If you have security defaults enabled, sometimes uh, this will be true and there won't be any conditional access policies. Other times you may not have either enabled. There's no conditional access policies or security defaults turned on. So that all reports there. And then lastly here, I went ahead and also reported on Duo MFA. So with Duo MFA, this might be something you set up as a custom control here where you're enforcing it via a conditional access policy. This is popular with MSPs who are using a lot of Duo MFA across their customers instead of Microsoft's MFA. So I just wanted to note that within here. As far as the prerequisites go that I roughly will touch on here as I do in all videos, you do have to have the secure application model set up with PowerShell so that you gathered your necessary tokens and goods so that you can create this connection to your customer environment securely to run these scripts against them. And then secondly, you need that API token as well from Synchro with uh, the necessary permissions that I'll be outlining here as well. So we can actually create and update documentation in Synchro as well as your uh, prefix to your URL here that you set up the account with. So getting into it here, let me pop into this script. First things that I'm asking here again for are all your tokens and your keys and everything like that so that we can just plug those in and you can define them as parameters in the script itself so you don't actually have to enter them in one at a time as you're getting prompted for them. If you put them all in at first, you won't get prompted for anything. Next thing we're doing here is making sure that we have the MS Online module installed within PowerShell. And if not, we are installing it. We're defining our secrets there from the parameters you passed in earlier for the secure application model. We're defining our key and subdomain that you defined for Synchro. And then here I'm defining the permissions that you need to have for this API token within Synchro. There's documentation on that, I'll link below. I'm not gonna go through that within the portal. It's very easy, there are checkboxes that you select against that API key. The next ones here are functions that I've created here tapping into Synchro's REST API so that we can do some things within your own environment using your key and subdomain. These include things like getting all of your customers, updating your documentation, creating documentation, and then also getting all that documentation against what we're looking for here as well too so we can see if it already exists or not. That decides the fork of if it's updated or if it's created. You'll see that a little bit later here. From there, we're getting all of your customers in Synchro and we're looking for that email field to be populated on the customer record so that we can map it against domain records within Partner Center for these customers. It's kind of how we're performing this soft match against them to see if they actually exist in both environments to know how to associate this documentation. From there, we're getting the connection set up to Partner Center and using our tokens there to create that connection. 
so that we can loop through all of our customers here. And so essentially here what we're doing is we're just collecting a bunch of this data like the MFA status using that old PowerShell mentality with the MS Online commandlets. We're getting all the users though, and then we're also looping through to see if we can get the, the conditional access policies. And we're writing out an output to say, hey, you might not have the necessary licensing here for us to be able to grab conditional access policies. It does require a P1 licensing, whether that's standalone or within a bundle like Microsoft 365 Business Premium, for instance. The second thing we're doing here is we're getting the conditional access policies by name um, and also looking for that duo MFA uh, as part of that as well for a custom control. And then lastly here we're looking for the security defaults policy whether it's enabled or disabled within the tenant. And then from there we are simply creating this user object where we're putting in some of the fields that are concatenated on here to this user object like the legacy MFA or if they're registered via uh, security defaults or conditional access policies. We're then defining some tenant objects here that we can display information on. We can display information on the conditional access policies. Those those are by name. And then that duo MFA custom control here as well. From there, all we're doing is we're defining our body. We're saying, hey, if this customer exists, if we have it, we've mapped it against somebody in Partner Center and if we see that the particular name here we're defining is the authentication report dot customer name, we're basically making all that a variable and then we're putting it out into an HTML output here. And then the doc exists is looking at the current documents variable that we created here where the name equals the name. So if we're saying, hey, we're going to create this, does it already exist? We're looking for this name in synchro to decide what do we do here in this if statement, whether that be simply creating a net new page because it doesn't exist or updating the existing documentation. So with this, you can create all the MFA reports for your customers, and then you can loop through and basically go through, you know, periodically just to update them with the new statistics over time. So that's the entire script here. Uh, next thing I wanted to do is just briefly go over some error handling so you understand what you might be seeing there and how to troubleshoot it. Basically here, for some of these controls that we're doing here, the API calls you're making your app that you created with the secure application model may not have the full necessary permissions to get this information at first. So this is something that you want to look for before you even run the script even once to try to avoid that altogether. I'll pop into a particular tenant with the app set up here, show you those permissions. Okay, so I'm in this tenant and I've gone into the API permissions section. The full path, if you want to go back to it here, is under App Registrations, All Applications, and then whatever the name of the app that you registered here is for this particular organization. From there, you'll go ahead and click on API Permissions. And down here, you'll need to have this Policy Read All permission set for Delegated and Application uh, for this one, and then Reports Read All as well too. Uh, so you can do that by just going in here to Add Permission, clicking on Microsoft Graph, and unfortunately, I think you have to do these one at a time, Delegated and Application, but you can search for the policy right here and do the Policy Read All, and then the same thing with Report. Once you do that, you're going to want to make sure it's saved. You'll see that it hasn't been granted yet, and you'll want to just grant and click on yes. So that'll ensure that that actually updates correctly. And then further troubleshooting step, if that still doesn't work, you're still getting four or three errors, but you have these permissions, you may need to just simply update your refresh token again with those new permissions included so that it can perform the function correctly. So that's everything I wanted to show for you guys. That's final output as well here too. You see the authentication reports coming through within this particular environment. You can click into them here and I can see them. And this is all part of the comprehensive scripts that I wrote. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like or subscribe if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks guys, have a great day.